Hey everyone, you know what time it is. You made it to the class. This is how to pass NCLEX and you're gonna be so happy that you showed up today. We got NCLEX questions all about nursing priorities and they are tough. I wanted to make it tough for you guys because we are at the final day of the the last day actually. It's the last day of January and we're moving on to the next thing. Somebody sent me an email and said, hey Regina, what do you have planned? after the 30 day NCLEX challenge. And so I have it for you guys today. It is love. Oh wait, one more. The process of, uh, uh, the process is frustrating. <laughs> I forgot the Monday motivation. I'm so excited to get to the event. So here's the event. Love your content. That's right. We are doing this again. We did it last year. We had such an amazing turnout for our NCLEX maternity review and you know we spend valentine's day together going over maternity sexually transmitted diseases i mean and this really jump starts a lot of people in this section to a really great foundation and so um if you want to sign up for this event you can do it now by going to remarnurse.com forward slash love okay also if you are watching on facebook if you just put in your comment, hashtag L-O-V-E, hashtag L-O-V-E, we will get you signed up. Uh, Team Remar will get you signed up. We'll send you the link so that you can do that, all right? So this is, again, a free NCLEX review that we are doing for you on Valentine's Day. Um, it's actually a two-day, it's actually a two-day review, and I don't even think I said that, um, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out on Valentine's Day weekend, the weekend before, so that Monday and that Tuesday, the actual Valentine's Day, you could be studying with me. Cause you guys know on Mondays we reserve it for studies. So go out on the weekend, cause that's what I'm gonna do, Mark and I. And then Monday and Tuesday, you will be able to attend this event. And again, this is love your content. I see somebody doing it already. You, you understood the assignment, right? Hashtag love. If you are watching on Facebook, just comment it hashtag love so that you can get signed up. All right, so this is the right way. This is no spaces, no spaces in it, okay? I want it to look like, I want it to look like that. Hashtag love, all right? Hashtag love. And um, this will be our, our next event. So let's get it, let's get signed up. There will be uh, a workbook that you will get, practice questions, homework. You guys know the whole shebang for free all you have to do is commit to showing up. So reserve two days and we will get that going. All right, are you guys ready for your NCLEX questions today? They are tough, they're not easy, so prepare your mind. Also, one more thing I wanna tell you is that if you have not subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel or if you have not liked the Facebook page, you need to do that because we have a lot of things coming in 2022. And so if you don't have the connection, you will miss opportunities. And I don't want you guys to do that. So here's the first question. Here's the first question. It's this. Love it. A nurse is caring for a clinically blind client. After six days of monitoring the client, she sees him reading a note on a bedside table. She thinks his vision is improving. Which action is most appropriate at this time? One, document the client's vision is improving. Two, document the vision appears to be improving. Three, document it is my professional opinion the client's vision is progressing in a positive direction or four do not document the situation ha hey, hey. challenging inflex question day right now what do you guys think i want to see answers on the screen and this again is what we do every week here at remar if you are not setting aside time to study if you are not setting aside time to join our community events you're missing out on chances to just do better this year. 2022 is about challenging yourself. 
And so right now, uh, we have a challenging question and I got answers. The community is divided. The community is divided. I need you, I need to see those answers. And also right now, tag your friend, tag your best friend, whoever it is, and let them know it's Monday, you gotta study, okay? All right, so here, the correct answer, I'm gonna give it to you, three, two, one, pow, is number four. Do not document this situation. And let me just make it very plain to you guys. Whenever I talk about the fundamentals of documentation for nurses, there are some things that we will not be documenting. And that is our, I say it all the time, our personal opinions. You don't document your personal opinions. And that was the case in this scenario. As nurses, we have to document things that we can actually verify and back up. So here's the situation. A nurse is caring for a legally blind client. After six days of monitoring the client, she sees him reading a note on the bedside table. She thinks his vision is improving. She thinks his vision is improving, all right? But so what? Did you measure it? Do you have any metrics that's verifiable? No. And so all of these, all of these choices, one, two, and three, are all opinions, right? All opinions. If you want to document that the vision has changed, you better measure it. You better get out something and you better measure it. Because remember, this is a chart that can be reviewed for legal cases. What if this patient falls and say they didn't, they did not protect me as a blind client. Somebody put a, a tripping, somebody put a chair in front of my bed and I thought that it was something else and I fell and hit my head. They're gonna look at that chart and if they see that a nurse documented that the vision was improving, And some hot water so you guys are always in a situation where you are able to be a safe and effective nurse okay a safe and effective nurse let's look at let's look at the next question hope you guys are tracking with me today all right here we go an unlicensed caregiver is preparing to move a client with right-sided weakness to I'm sorry from a bed to a chair where should the nurse place the chair? Where should the nurse place the chair? So they're going from a bed to a chair. Where should the nurse place the chair for a client with right-sided weakness? Is it one, at a 90 degree angle on the right side of the client? Two, at a 45 degree angle on the right side of the client? Three, at a 90 degree angle on the left side of the client? or four, parallel to the bed on the left side of the client. What do you guys think? This is a perfect, perfect NCLEX question. Perfect, all right, because it is, it is really about training that you get on a basic level of nursing, and as a nurse, the education that you will have to provide to the unlicensed caregiver working with you, working with you, yes. And so if you were trying to teach somebody, your nurse's aide, how to move a patient, what them to do number four? Yes, you got it. We don't want the, we don't want the chair on the right side because the patient, that patient has right-sided weakness. So if we put the chair on the right side and the client goes to use the, the armrest, right? They're gonna have to use it with the right weak side. We don't want that. We want them to be empowered. We want them to be able to have a range of motion, use that left side as much as possible, right? And so we want the object, whether it's a chair, whether it's a cup, whether it's their glasses, whether it's their favorite book, we always wanna put that on the strong side of the patient, right? And if we're talking about a chair, the acceptable positions on the strong side for NCLEX are gonna be at a 45 degree angle or parallel 
to the bed, all right? 45 degree angle or parallel to the bed. Yay, I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so glad you guys are here studying today. Here we go, another question. Let's look at the nursing priority here. Intestinal exams for a client. Which test should be scheduled first? So we have one patient and they need several exams. Which test for the MRI? Great priority question. They all are important. Do you understand? Okay, all right. <laughs> pray, pray, y'all. Pray, pray, pray. All right, so we are talking about the priority. We are talking about the priority of a series of questions, uh, a series of exams for one patient. And so I saw a lot of the comments. I saw a lot of the comments, and people had got it right. They understood. They understood the intentionality of ordering these appropriately and it is going to be to put the number three the ultrasound first yes the ultrasound first why are we going to put the ultrasound first because it is the fastest and it is the least invasive it's the fastest and it's the least invasive and so if you think about the preparation for the other exams Man, they're going to take some time. If you do a colonoscopy, a colonoscopy on a patient, what do they have to do first? They have to empty their bowels. So that means you're going to have to give them um, an enema preparation and they're going to have to drink it, right? Um, and then they're going to have to flush out their bowels. So that's going to take time. The MRI, that may take time, 30 minutes to an hour. But if you think about an ultrasound, that's going to be a very quick that's going to be a very quick exam and it's going to be able to give um, the, the, the healthcare clinicians, the healthcare clinicians more information. So did you get that one right? Okay, here we got it. Let's do another one. Oh, here we go. Which client should the nurse see first? Which client should the nurse see first? All right. So is it client A, a female with diabetes mellitus type 2 and a hemoglobin, mm -hmm, a hemoglobin of 15. Here we go. Client B, male, diabetes mellitus type 2 and a fruity smelling breath. Three. Client C is a female, diabetes mellitus type 2, and irritability, mm -hmm. or four, a male patient, diabetes mellitus type 2, and fatigue. All right. I am preparing you guys for more critical thinking because these clients, 
essentially all have the same chronic illness. All right, and so we're looking at subtle alterations within that chronic illness here. Very good, very good way to measure your understanding, okay, within, within one disease. And so our priority for this patient is gonna be, um, I'm sorry, our priority, so which patient to see is going to be client number two. I love it, I love it. You guys got this one right. Exactly. Because this patient has diabetes mellitus type two and they have a fruity smelling breath, um, this is going to indicate uh, an acidosis state, right? And this is something that you normally would not see in diabetes mellitus type two. So something really is going on. Now, if the patient had diabetes um, mellitus type one, we would have some DKA going on, DKA. So I put these two on this slide because if you're just joining Remar, maybe you don't have the virtual trainer, but you are in pursuit of passing your nursing license exam, you have to understand the principles of diabetic ketoacidosis, right, DKA, and then you need to know the state of acidosis in general. What does it mean? What would your laboratory values look like? What is the treatment for acidosis? These are all things that are gonna be very important to getting a nursing license. We all wanna be nurses, but once we get that license, we have to be able to serve the population, right? We have to be able to serve the population. So the other clients, they, uh, number one, you have a client with diabetes mellitus, the hemoglobin is normal, I'm not worried about it. Um, client C, they have diabetes mellitus and they're having some irritability. We would wanna investigate what could be causing the irritability um, of the patient patient, why do they have, you know, a uh, short patience with, with someone, but not in a priority over somebody we know is exhibiting signs of um, a severity of diabetes mellitus, okay? Um, and then the patient with diabetes mellitus type 2 and fatigue, again, fatigue is important. We want to know about it, but it's not going to be more important than fruity smelling breath, fruity smelling breath. All right. Okay. I think I have one more. Let's see here. Oh, guys, which client should the nurse see first? Shout out to my nurses in the house right now. Um, is it is it number one, a college student who is severely depressed and angry? Two, a nurse who is severely depressed and angry. Three, a teacher who is severely depressed and angry. Or four, a police officer who is severely depressed and angry. Welcome to Remar Review. This is what we do every Monday. We get it in, we challenge ourselves. I challenge you guys, I try to throw you off. I try to get you to think out of the box. You have four patients here who all have the same symptoms. The only difference, the only difference is what they do for a living, what training they have, what is the population they're around. Ooh, how do you prioritize that? That's what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see the answers on the screen. I'm not, I'm not putting no answers up for nobody to see. I want you to commit in your own mind what you think is best and put that on the screen. Don't worry about what nobody else is doing right now. What do you think it is? All right, right or wrong, right or wrong, um, we're going to go over it. That's what we do here. Okay, the correct answer, who should the nurse see first? Uh, apart from everything, it's going to be this person. It is going to be the police officer. Did you get that one? And this was tricky. This one was so hard. All right, if you don't want any hard questions, just say, Regina, don't do this anymore. Uh, but number four, the police officer who is severely depressed and angry because they legally have access to weapons, right? Uh, they legally have access to weapons. So if this person is angry and they go into maybe like, um, you know, the, 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 the city hall where everybody else is going to have be stopped and they're gonna have their badge checked and if they have a gun, it's gonna be removed. The police officer can go in there, 
right? Go in that situation, go in that hospital, legally carrying a weapon. And so we have to, we have to be able to establish nursing priorities based off of many things, based off of cultural considerations, based off of patient history, right? And that's, a, that's I think, why the NCLEX is going to be changing is because nursing is not just a sterile place. It's not a perfect world. That's not how it is. You guys know that. And so we have to be prepared for all types of situations when it comes to nursing, right? So yes, they're, they're their job, they have legal access to weapons. And then in general, they are going to be exposed to violence more. That's part of their job. You know, that's part of their environment that they are in. Okay. Um, I do like that Shakar. Shakar, I think they say, say Shakar says they also have a risk for suicide, right? A, a risk for suicide. And my, my brother's actually... police officer and, and so stressful their jobs are so okay so um there we go so number four number four is going to be correct all right number four and again if you want to continue studying with re Remar and you need the opportunity to do so we have this event called love your content coming up it is my maternity review it's my maternity review. So um, sign up if you are on YouTube by going to remarnurse.com forward slash L-O-V-E. It's just my website forward slash L-O-V-E. Or if you are on Facebook, comment right now, comment right now, hashtag love, hashtag love, and we will send you the link to get you signed up for this event. And thank you guys so much for coming. We, we usually typically have thousands of students to come. Hey, Monday motivation for this week is the process is frustrating. The process is frustrating. Think about everything that you're going through right now. And I, um, last week, a student apologized. And typically when people reach out to me, it's not because they're so I, I'm just gonna, um, I don't have the student's name here, but this is the apology I got. And it said this, hi, so I purchased the VT, the virtual trainer back in December, 2020. I was so angry at this time because I had just failed my NCLEX exam. It was near Christmas and I didn't receive my book for almost a month or so. You know how mail is always backed up around that time plus the pandemic. I studied the VT and quick facts daily. I have done the six week schedule and then studied on my own with the question bank. I have learned so much. I took the NCLEX 20 years ago and stopped working for over five years. I had to retake the NCLEX. NCLEX in order to return to nursing about and quick facts. She says, I passed every test that has to do with the LPN exam only because of your VT and quick facts. Thank you, Remar. I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX only because of Remar, right? Only because of Remar. And so getting that apology was such a surprise but it made me think of the process that you guys are going through, right? So when you are trying to study for NCLEX, the, 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 the frustration of the process is real, right? You, you have to take time to research. Some of you guys have researched someone, something, right? Some book, right? Even me, I know you guys are Googling me, trying to figure out who I am. And then when you take the time to purchase a product, 
all right? If you are choosing Remar, you might have to wait for that product because we send you out physical books, right? Um, and so there is frustration in that. And then the actual time it takes to study, the student said she did the six week calendar. I know those six weeks are not always going to be, you know, butterflies and roses. This is a process and it's real. I'm trying to get you guys to understand that when, when you are studying for NCLEX, you have to know that challenges are going to come. You have to be prepared for the challenges that come along with it, right? Anything that is worth doing, anything that is worth doing isn't going to be easy, right? And so um, well, what happens is this, what happens is this, is that constant challenges bring frustration, okay? Constant challenges bring frustration in our lives and if we dwell on the frustrations, what, what happens is the frustrations, and I see this in a real example of a lot of my nursing students, the frustration leads to fear. It leads to anxiety, right? And then once you're in a fear survival mode and you're constantly just trying to make it moment by moment, then that's when anger and resentment come in. And when you're angry, you're going to have conflict. You're going to want to take it out on somebody. Usually it's the people who are around you the most that get it. And you guys know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. When we get to that place where we're, we're letting fear control us and we're anxious, then anger and resentment are not far, are not far from it. So I appreciate it. I, I, I appreciated the, the nursing students' transparency and just saying, hey, this is where I was. This is why I did these things and I'm sorry for it. I apologize. I think this week we need to look around and we need to think about our behavior and we need to say, is there anybody I need to apologize to? Because I have been so frustrated. I have been so short because I'm trying to get this test passed. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. I'm not always going to come on here and tell you guys, hey, you're doing good. Hey, you're doing awesome. Because some days I might need to say, check your attitude, check your actions, check your behavior. Does it line up with somebody that's really trying to help the world? Or are we being really selfish right now, right? Because we're trying to get our goals accomplished. So if you have been operating, if you have been operating in fear, frustration, anxiety, anger, resentment, we got to figure out how to deal with those situations, right? Um, and so these are just things I think that will help die down some of the challenges. So if you have challenges, it's time to self-reflect, okay? So what's causing the challenge? Is it, is it the fault of yourself or somebody else? Because at the end of the day, if it's the fault of somebody else, then reach out. But understand too, there are some there are some circumstances that cannot be controlled. So from a Remar perspective, if you order a book and we send it out the next day and we put it in the hands of the United States Postal Service, there is nothing we can do if that mail carrier takes six hours or an extra day. There's literally nothing we can do. You guys know how the United States Postal Service is, right? Or DHL. If we send out a book and we put it in the hands of DHL and it has to go to Nigeria, it's gonna take DHL some time to get there, all right? And so although it can be frustrating, we have to realize that sometimes we need to build in room for challenges, right? We need to build in room for challenges. Um, and so self-reflecting is gonna be great if you have a single challenge. Frustrations, talking that thing out. I don't mind having frustrations. You will have frustration, okay? You will have frustration in life. Frustration is kind of like anxiety to me, right? Um, you usually have frustration because you believe something should be better. And I love that. I love when you're frustrated with uh, your, your, your life. I love when you're frustrated with the car you drive or the job you're working because you know something better should be there. And so frustration can help you do things that are positive. So talking it out. If I'm frustrated, let's say if I'm frustrated with Mark, right? Um, the best thing for me to do is to talk to him about it, is to say, hey, 
we need to do this to get here. Or, you know, what do you think we should do to get here? That's how, that's how you deal with the frustration. You talk that thing out. Don't hold it all in because it, it doesn't help, right? So let's get into talking. Let's get into apologizing. Fear and anxiety. If you have not done my, uh, my anxiety workshop, do it. It's free. Okay. Do it. It's free. Um, um, and it's identifying positive coping mechanisms because anxiety and fear are real. They are real. They're real challenges that some people deal with every day. And so, um, if you're suffering from fear or anxiety, the best thing that you can do is identify things that you are going to replace that fear or anxiety with. All right. And so, Maybe it is scripture memorization. Maybe it is prayer. When you start to feel anxious or anxiety, or when you start to feel anxiety doing something, you need to step back, right? And say, you know what? Maybe these questions are too much for me right now. I'm getting anxiety doing these questions. Let me try reading. Let me try making flashcards. There's something positive that you can do to replace that anxiety because the anxiety I'm telling you is not working for you. It's not helping you. So stop it. Stop what you're doing and find something to replace it with. All right. And then again, conflict, anger, or resentment. If you're at these stages with anyone or yourself, you have to stop and regain control by defining what's acceptable. What's acceptable, right? If you're angry at a person or a process, that's something that you're going to have to fix, right? Um, you're going to have to be able to identify, hey, this part, this way that I'm behaving, it, it's not really acceptable. It's not really, it's not really who I want to be. It's not really who I want people to think of me as. What can I do to get a little bit handle on this situation? And I'll say something as something that I've come to know is that I cannot control how other people respond to me. I can only control my behavior. So if I'm having, you know, a conflict or a situation with somebody, I know I am only responsible for how I'm choosing to behave. So if you go out there and you give that apology, hey, I'm sorry I said those things. I didn't mean it or I wasn't who I know I can be at that moment. And they say, I don't care about that. Don't talk to me no more. There's nothing you can do about that. But you know that you have done something that you think is more appropriate, all right? Which is apologizing where you're wrong. The other person, they're gonna have to deal with their own resentment, anger, or conflict in their own way. But as a nurse, as a professional, you're gonna have to learn how to uh, forgive and forget very quickly because your patients, because they are in pain, because they are hurting, because they are frustrated, because they are angry, because they are dying, because they are addicted to, you know, opioids, they can say some pretty harsh things. They can make that day of caring for them pretty frustrated. And if you don't know how to have acceptable behaviors for yourself, you're going to be going back and forth. I've seen it. I've seen nurses arguing with their patient. I've seen nurses swearing at their patients. I've seen nurses refusing to do education or treatment with their patients because they're just as frustrated as their patients. But we have to have a standard for ourselves of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. All right. So we're learning that this week. I want us to focus on that this week because there is something that we can do so that we don't fall into this trap. So. In general, let's start at the frustration, okay? Let's start at the frustration. Um, if you are frustrated, focus on how you would like things to be. Like, what is the best possible outcome in the current situation, right? What's the best possible outcome? So, hey, um, if you are frustrated about having to wait for your ATT or your testing date, your preferred testing date to open up, so many nurses had to do that during COVID, their test date would just get canceled or they wouldn't be able to test. That's frustrating. But what could you do instead of just being frustrated every day? Hey, you can find more time to study, right? You could look for alternate locations. Um, you could say, hey, um, you know, is there something going on that we need to know about? 
those are all positive things to deal with the frustration. Um, if you are, you know, you're wanting to know about Remar or people say all the time, hey, where's my book at? That's a positive statement because you want to know more information. Now, if we say we mailed it off, it's coming, then you have to understand that perhaps you may think about, okay, so do I need more time to study? You know, how can you assist me? These are things that are actually going to reduce a lot of the frustration when you're studying for NCLEX. If you're doing questions and you're getting all the questions wrong, if you're doing pediatric questions or maternity questions, or you know you don't know sexually transmitted diseases, instead of you being frustrated by doing questions, hey, sign up for Love Your Content. And then you're gonna have two days of an intensive content review on the subject. And that's gonna reduce your frustration. So there are many, many ways that we can positively cope, but if you don't know, just reach out to us and, and, and just tell us and uh, we'll try to help you. We'll try to help you. That is why we have this community. That is why we do what we do at Remar. All right, so this is it. This is it. I want you guys, if you have the VT, think about it this week and understand that it is there to challenge you to do better. It is there to challenge you. So I don't want you to be frustrated with your virtual trainer this week <laughs> all right i want you to love the challenge of preparing with the interactive content the critical thinking questions get out your workbooks get studying in them get into quick facts if you need to um, but also hey sign up for the love your content review i was just talking about it it's a two-day it's a two-day maternity review Oh, thank you so much, Nancy. She says, love Monday motivation. Thank you, Regina, for NCLEX. Such great advice and help to reset the mindset. I appreciate that. That one comment did it for me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we're gonna spend two days together, uh, Monday, February 14th and February 15th uh, at here, right here on Facebook or YouTube. We will be going over some great content. So sign up for it now, remarnurse.com. And, oh, I have some more information. Yeah, there it is, everything I just said. So I wanna see you there and I wanna see you with your license this year. It starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Did I say that? Set your alarm, set your alarm. You literally have about two, not even two weeks. Literally, sign up today, that's it. I'm not even gonna say two weeks. Just sign up today, you'll get the workbook. We're also gonna do a great uh, discount on the VT. And it's just gonna be an amazing time and you'll be challenged. If you thought the questions today were challenging, come to love your content, come to love your content. I will see you guys. If nobody has told you this, you're going to be an amazing nurse. You are. And once you get your nursing license, you're gonna have so much fun planning your new life. And so this Valentine's Day, love yourself and love this nursing content because it will help you indeed pass NCLEX. Hey. I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX.